and then everybody coming from different regions came and they said, we hear him speak in our own tongue. Uh, so that's what happens here in Mark chapter 13. So I wrote on your outline that in tribulation, the little flock goes only to Israel and they do not finish this before the end, but they are brought before kings to publish the gospel among all nations. And the reason God wants them to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel because God is building up the believing remnant that's going to enter into that kingdom. And the way, and the problem is Israel um, is going to be scattered among the nations. If you go over to Leviticus 26, and this is why God has them go being arrested, brought before judges and kings, and the gospel is published among all nations is because even though they're only supposed to go to Israel at this time, Israel is scattered among the nations due to their unbelief. So if God is going to reach uh, the little flock of Israel, He's got to go, the gospel has to go among all nations. That's why it says, it doesn't say to all nations, it says among all nations. Because really the message is still to the little flock of Israel, it's to Israel so that they may be saved and enter the kingdom. But to reach them all because they're scattered, then it has to be uh, preached among all nations, in all nations, in order to reach all of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Leviticus 26 uh, goes through um, verse 14 starts where the curses, God gives them the law, if they don't follow the law, there are these curses and it ends up, we call this the five cycles of chastisement. And then when you get down to, in the fifth cycle, that final cycle there, which is in that tribulation period, and down there in verse um, 33, in Leviticus 26, verse 33, it says, And I will scatter you among the heathen, or among the Gentiles, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. So God had prophesied because of the unbelief of Israel, the Jews are going to be scattered among all nations. They're scattered among the heathen there, among the Gentiles. If you go over to John chapter 7, we can actually see that at the time of the writing of the book of Revelation, this was true. And it's going to be true uh, when the tribulation period starts. Uh, John chapter 7, I mentioned that probably the book of Revelation is written about a year after the cross of Christ. So when we're in John 7, we're just maybe, you know, who knows, maybe uh, just uh, two years, if that, before the writing of the book of Revelation. And you see here, Jesus is saying that he's going somewhere. He's really saying that he's going unto the Father. But the people who hear him, the Jews, the religious people, ask him this question in John 7, verse 35. John 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves. In the book of John, when you see the term Jews, it's a reference to the religious leaders. Uh, a lot of times in the book of Matthew, you'll see Pharisees or Sadducees, chief scribes, elders. Uh, in the book of John, the key word for them is they just, they're just called Jews, most cases. So John 7, 35, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? So um, here, even in Jesus' day, we see that there are Jews who are dispersed among the Gentiles and in the Jewish religion, because they're not there, they're considered uh, Gentiles in, in their minds. But really, these are Jews, physical Jews, who have been, because of the fifth cycle of chastisement in Leviticus 26, where God says, if you don't obey my law, I'm going to scatter you among the heathen. We see that already has taken place in Jesus' day. They are scattered or dispersed among the Gentiles. And so you're filling the blank there for chapter 10, verse 11, is that because they're scattered there, the only way all Israel is saved is by going to all nations because Israel is scattered among the nations. Israel is scattered among the nations. We even see this in Jesus' day. Um, so really what's going on, and we're about out of time, and we'll pick up in chapter 11 next time, but uh, really what we're seeing here in the book of Revelation is that in chapter 10, verses 1 through 7, we're told about the end time, about how God's going to have that kingdom on earth, and it's going to be eternal. It's off the chart over here. 
the question in John's mind and the believing remnant is, who's going to be in that kingdom? We don't have many believers here. And so I believe that verses 8 through 11 is uh, really telling you how the word of God, the prophecy of all these events here in the book of Revelation and what Jesus said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how those instructions and those things are going to get out to Israel even though they're all over the all over the world. And so in chapter 10, verse 11, when it says, He said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Uh, notice again, just like we saw in Mark chapter 7, we saw the gospel is published, or was it Mark 13, we saw the gospel must be published among all nations. It doesn't say to all nations, it says among them. Uh, we see the similar type phrasing here. It says, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples. It doesn't say you're going to the Gentiles with the gospel, but it says you're going to prophesy before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And the idea there is that Israel, so beginning of the tribulation period, if you got some, the little flock, which is very small at the beginning, they believe uh, that God will bring them into the kingdom. They put themselves under the law of covenant. They do not align themselves with the Antichrist. And they go out to the cities of Israel to preach that good news. Just like John the Baptist and Jesus said. They'll say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then as they're doing that, they're going to be arrested by those who have aligned themselves with the Antichrist. Apostate Israel. They're the ones that made a seven-year covenant with them. They're going to be uh, arresting them, persecuting them, um, and they're going to be brought before these judges and kings, and they're going to go to different nations and different places there and going to be tried. And when they are tried then, the Holy Ghost, through the gift of tongues, will speak through them so that the, the Jews in that nation and those people can hear the gospel, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, believe that, and join the little flock of Israel. So I believe in chapter 10, verses 8 through 11, John is thinking... Nobody's going to be in the kingdom. Who's going to be there? There are just so few people. And the answer is, here, John, here's a book. Here's the book of prophecy. And for you who believe, it's going to be sweet. For those who don't believe, it's bitter. And this book, through the persecution of the little flock, those words are going to be spoken through their mouths by the gift of tongues, by the Holy Ghost, in all these different nations before all these people so that the Jews who are scattered in all these nations will hear the gospel, so that all the lost sheep of the house of Israel will believe, be saved, and enter the kingdom. That's what he's talking about there. And then next week when we get to chapter 11, we see how the process all gets started. It's like I said, when the rapture takes place, the body of Christ is gone, there are no believers on the earth. So it's all God's going to start the process uh, with, with the tribulation period with these two witnesses. They're going to start in Jerusalem. They're going to prophesy there. People are going to believe that. That's how the little flock is going to get started, and then it goes on from there. Uh, so I think that's the reason that it's put in here, even though it's not in chronological order. Uh, God is telling the little flock, telling John, you know, don't be discouraged. Uh, there will be people in the kingdom. All of Israel is going to be saved, as God promises. But um, And here, and so now he says, here's how it's going to take place. You've got the prophecy. You've got the words of God. Chapter 11 is going to be spoken by the two witnesses. People are going to believe, and it's going to grow from there. Uh, so next week we'll pick up in chapter 11. But with that, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you for your word and the, the mercy that you showed to Israel, that even though they're in a status of unbelief, that you would send people, and even in harm's way, to preach the gospel to them so that they may be saved, because it gives us encouragement for ourselves as well, as we live in a nation that has turned their backs upon God, that we can stand on your word, believe it, and that it can still penetrate the hearts of man. So help us to live out, walk in the Spirit, so that others may believe. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.